Com. Later. I'm looking at the eye. I'm Trish Stratus, and I'm up front on OTR. Off the record with Michael Landsberg is brought to you by the Cake Steakhouse and Bar. For great steaks, good friends, see you tonight. She was with us to talk wrestling once upon a time, lots of boxing and other stuff today. Trish Stratus is going to appear on the cover of Oxygen Magazine. We've got four energetic men standing by for the panel, but if we got to them first, I could not tick off the M where it says gender on my driver's license. And I want to keep that right. So we welcome to the show up front today, Trish Stratus, retiring. You're no longer a wrestler. Why? <laughs> um, because it was just time. Um, I had been in the business for almost seven years, and um, it was a contract thing. The contract came up, and, uh, you know, it was like, okay, But you could have had another contract. They still oh, like yeah, you. They this offered is 100% me a contract. your decision. But yeah. if I look at wrestlers over the course of its history, very few wrestlers retire. Very few do what you're doing. So, mm -hmm. again, I kind of ask you, like, like, why? Is this a, a change in life for you? You want to move on to a different stage? What? I just wanted to stop and smell the roses. It just, um, you know, a couple things around me. It was, you know, my contract came up from beginning of September. Do you want to resign for three to five years? I thought, well, um, I've been in the business for seven. I've been on this grind for seven years. And uh, Unforgiven, the pay-per-view in Toronto was middle of September. And my wedding, I'm getting married, um, is happening at the end of September. And it was just like a change of life. But did you feel like you couldn't be married and, and continue to wrestle and live that lifestyle and do the things that you do as a wrestler? No, that was just a, sort of a, a beginning of my next chapter. It just happens to be that you way. You burned out because, I mean, the physical toll <laughs> is huge. And you have suffered some, some pretty serious injuries. Mm -hmm. How much of, of that was a factor? Um, it was a small part of it. But mostly, you know, there's a few times that I've been off. Um, I had a back injury. I had a dislocated shoulder recently. And when I'm off and I was at home and I had all this real-life stuff in front of me, like, uh, the number of friends I've had that have had their first child, I've missed that. Uh, friends of mine getting married. My mom was ill recently. I couldn't be by her side. So things like that, like real life stuff in front of me made me think, you know what? Um, I want to stop and I want to enjoy life a little bit. And, um, and all, like, the only way I got through seven years of that lifestyle was from all these people around me, friends and family, supporting me. So now I kind of felt like it's time to give them... See, know, I, it's funny because you're kind of proving it after the fact, but I never saw you the way I saw a lot of other wrestlers. I never thought that you were a lifetimer. Did you always see yourself as not being a lifetimer, that this was one stage in your life? I, don't, I didn't really think about it. it you know, kind of like, I mean, even the career I got sort of came out of nowhere. And um, thanks to this show. <laughs> and I just kind of went with the, you know, kind of went with the flow. It was like suddenly I was, suddenly I was a valet and suddenly I was a wrestler and, and just kind of, you know, kept Because you started out and, and when you first started out with the WWE, you were there because of your physical appeal, right? Mm -hmm. That you were not, you were I not. I was hot. You, you can say it, Michael. Uh, well, that would be more of an editorial judgment that uh, people at home should have that opportunity to make. Uh, but you weren't really wrestling. And, and through the years, I, I'm wondering, did you turn down storylines? Because Vince likes to push the sex angle, and Vince will take it further than a lot of people want to go. Did you ever tell him, no, I'm, I won't do that? Yeah. I mean, there was a few things that just, I was never comfortable with the whole sex kitten thing of it all. And ultimately, Vince wants the person to be comfortable. And that's the only way you're going to confidently come across than you do what, you know, convey a confident message is being comfortable. Did he ever have to push you and say, look, you know, there's a, there's a reason why you're doing what you're doing, and part of that is because you sell sex, and that's what we want you to do? Um, a few times I trusted him, and I always knew he would uh, never steer me wrong. I did trust in him all the way, and um, a few times I was like, oh, I don't know about that. And then in the end, I was like, oh, yeah, I did How about out. the roster in the dressing room? Uh, did the male wrestler, wrestlers, by and large, did they respect you? Yeah, uh, I really feel like they did. I think, um, especially right now where we're at, it seems like, Believe it or not, I mean, I ended up, you know, being one of the veterans on the roster because, you know, it's like sort of the turnover happens. Um, and, yeah, I mean, just these, this last couple of weeks, um, you know, with my retirement being announced and stuff, it's just I've had a few words with a lot of the, the, the guys, and, and they've just, it's been really, really, uh, you know, touching. Because you want to be them. taken more seriously than a lot of the previous women yeah. who, who were really there only as eye candy, but you wanted to be taken seriously as an athlete. That Did you always... have to convince, were there guys that you, you maybe never convinced? Randy Orton, for instance? No. Right. Randy Orton, I convinced him. You convinced him. <laughs> Did you have to work hard with a lot of guys? Yeah, I think so, because, you know, you're always proving yourself. I, my main goal always when I went out there was to prove myself to the fans and to the guys in the back that I belong in the ring, that I was, uh, you know, I could bring it like the guys How come you didn't do Playboy? Never my style. I just, um, I wanted, honestly, I wanted people to always remember me as Trish Stratus, the greatest women's wrestler ever. Did they ask to, you? Oh, my gosh. Yeah, the first six months I was in there, I got asked, and every year after that, and finally, they're like, 
Because you want to be taken seriously as a wrestler. I mean, that sounds kind of funny because wrestling, you know, isn't serious from the standpoint yeah, of the story. Yeah, but... but at this point, you go, um, Trish Stratus, she was that, you know, seven time WWE Women's Champion. It's never been done. Or you can go, Trish Stratus, oh, she was the one in Playboy. You know what I mean? So that's what But now that you're like. retired and you no longer have to now I'm gonna people do people to Playboy. Your... Would you do Playboy now? <laughs> no. Would you consider it? No. No. It's not my style. It's just not my style. That whole sexiness thing, it's just, it's like I'm naturally a tomboy. I'm a fighter. I'm a sports You know athlete. what? I met like... you how many years ago? Seven or eight years mm -hmm. ago and off the record. And you said, you know, I wanted to be involved in the WWE and you did it. And congratulations on that. It's, it's really a, a remarkable story. Thank you. Um, you went about it like a business and you built the business of Trish Stratus. Will you come back a little bit later on in the show for next question? Sure. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, if I told you what I was going to ask, you wouldn't return. The panel's up next. Uh -oh. Off the Records Up Front is brought to you by New Gillette Fusion, the best shave ever in manual and battery powered. Off the Record with Michael Landsberg is brought to you by the Keg Steakhouse and Bar. For great steaks, good friends, see you tonight. Stuck it to the Jets fans once. Now, why are they returning for more? We'll talk about that in a second. But we welcome to the show Adrian Smith. Great to welcome you. You're uh, out in the community. You're the Argonauts community ambassador. <laughs> and you also, uh, I see you on the bench. Why are you laughing? Why yeah, you, I'm on the bench. Why are you laughing? Because yeah. you're a game day coach. But I wasn't even going to mention that until you brought it up. It's admissible, sir, because of your laughter. Whatever. But you also know laughter is your thing, right? People are at home. They're going, oh, what a beautiful smile. No, thank you. But they're talking about this man, Jeff Hutchison. Oh. We know you as, of course, the sports and weather anchor for Canada Am. How many provinces were you in last week? Four provinces in four days. Actually, it was four and five, wasn't it? Uh, no, four and four. <laughs> Paul Hamilton, I know, welcome I was to the show. Where, what, how many states were you in this weekend? I was in Florida, Philadelphia, Buffalo, now here, and Lindy Ruff won't let me be a game day. You covered the I'm Buffalo tried. Bills <laughs> and the uh, Buffalo Sabres. Great to welcome you to the show. And Jamie Strashen, great to welcome you back to OTR. We know you as a CBC Radio uh, uh, reporter. Good to see you. Nice to see you, Michael. All right, so I love the hockey fans in Winnipeg. I thought the NHL screwed them the first time, but are they like the guy who gets dumped by his girl, now buying her gifts? when she's already dating someone else. Last night in the terrific new MTS Center in Winnipeg, a sold-out 15,015 show to watch Edmonton beat Phoenix. How do you see those fans already screwed once by the NHL showing up and hoping the league's going to return? I think it's, it's funny you chose that uh, music by Beck. It was kind of apt. I mean, here you have these... Well, that's actually why we, we chose it. <laughs> exactly. And here you have these Jets fans, you know, they're kind of marching along delusionally. They get dressed up in their Winnipeg Jets jerseys. It's, it's over. The NHL is not expanding. Michael? It's bloated already. Give it up. It's dumbest over. Question ever on, uh, <laughs> dumbest question ever I've ever heard. 15,000 fans. Hold but they... see, see, I resent that. I'll tell you why. Because we've asked way dumber questions. Way dumber questions. Dumber question, dumber question. question that I've you see our best And here's why. 15,000 people voted with their pocketbooks. It doesn't matter. They're hockey fans. They went to see hockey in Winnipeg. This had nothing to do with not having the Jets. It had a lot to do with maybe getting a team back. Well, they, but, they, they will never get a team back in Winnipeg. Yeah. Have you been to Winnipeg? Oh, I've been to Winnipeg. Like, hold on, and hold I on. love they, they it would in Winnipeg. <laughs> I think they Winnipeg would never, would never would get never a team an awesome city. City. I think Winnipeg is an awesome city, too, for the CFL. But for the NHL, the newfound NHL, they will never get a team. Have you been to that guy's city them, beside him? Where are you can, from? I'm from Buffalo. They can support it in the new NHL, but do you think Gary Bettman and those people sitting in New York City are going, Let's get that. No, Let's no, get to that's Winnipeg. Whoa, that'll get be back good. That but think what they, they did put, to them. They, they put the coyotes the there. On Doesn't that bother you, though? Like, 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 to me, my perspective on this whole thing is not, you know, not, not looking at the Jets fans and saying, what are they doing there? It's like, what is the NHL doing? That's like the this, ultimate this, team. This is what the NHL is doing. They're taking a, a, a chapter out of the NFL book. They're having a the game in Tokyo. They're having a the game in Mexico City. They're having a the game in Toronto. So give them, throw them a bone. Throw them I a bone. Give, give them a game in Winnipeg. It, it, it's great for the Winnipeg it's fans, not a but bone. it's not, there's, it's, it's there's not no a bone. team going in Winnipeg. It's a piece of grizzle. No, like, <laughs> it didn't bother 15,000 fans that their former team was back there. Don't you think it's it false pretenses, though? So don't you think no, that you're kind of throwing it out? Well, you, you're I, from Winnipeg, I, I right? Think, uh, no, I'm not from Winnipeg. For the purposes I, I of the show right now, okay, you're from Winnipeg. I'm now from Winnipeg. I think it shows that Phoenix sees an easy gate. They see they can go to Winnipeg, they can sell 15,000 right? seats. Yeah, they built that new arena. They Why did they build a, the arena? I think that under the delusional... Uh, That's what I'm saying. How much does the stadium hold? 
15,000. 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, It's reduced Canada, increased U.S. Well, But there are teams in, in six Canadian cities right But now. But they could make money there. The Buffalo Sabres made money last year. So they could make money in a small But you have to, make it, you have to make it to the You've conference got... final to make money. That's the thing. No, they right? had made money before the playoffs. And how many, how many Buffalo less than Sabres a million fans before the playoffs? come from uh, Southern Ontario? Oh, quite What's, a few. Yeah, quite a few, exactly. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Are you grilling him? I like that. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> they, if you look you, at Michael. the six teams that I mentioned... <laughs> In terms of their off-season, who do you think had the best off-season? Who do you think had the worst off-season of the six Canadian teams? Easy. I'm sitting in the city. They're the worst. <laughs> I mean, that, to me, that's not even a question. Who, who is that you were talking about? <laughs> no, no. Todd, I sh I Todd Gill, are you kidding me? I mean, you need, a, you need a defense that's a little bit more mobile. And you, all right, you got rid of Luke Richardson. Congratulations. Why'd you bring him in the first place? But Todd Gill? You actually called him Todd me? Gill, which is kind of funny. Or, Todd Gill's I did that, on, I did that on GI, No, I would too. agree with you that Todd Gill, Gill would be I'm a sorry. bad signing. Yeah, Hal Gill. I'm sorry. Sorry, Todd. I didn't mean to insult you. <laughs> yeah, but I, I've done that before, same, too. Same old equation here in Toronto. No improvements. Expectations for okay, fans. Do, do, do we think, do we we think Toronto actually wants to improve? You know what? No. Oh, hold on. Hold on. What, what, what the hell are you? You know what? Why if, do I they have the same, to? if I said the same thing about the Toronto Argonauts, you would be pissed at me. How could you say they don't want to improve? Why do they have to? They don't have to. What incentive do the Leafs have to improve? For the next million years. That's right. Okay, so they don't even have to worry about it. The Leafs operate on Okay, I just want to calculate how many stupid people are on the set. That's one, two. What? They want a more. They want a cop. That's all they got to do. They got people. You're talking about. An, an issue of competence or incompetence. I'm talking about, do you want to win? Of course you want to win. You got a salary Nobody cap. It's not like win. It, Well, he just did. They, they don't have to win. I know, but, but there's a value to winning, to too. Win. Because, Listen, because if they, they wanted to win, don't you think they would have won since, won since 67? I mean, every expansion team has almost won since 67. Exactly. And they haven't Everybody. come close. No, they, exactly. <laughs> So, so you're saying that, that every team that has not won the Stanley Cup over an extended period of time doesn't want with it. Their but, money. But you know with what? their money. Every NHL team has had a major signing in their offseason. When, when's the last time Toronto Maple Leafs had a major signing in the offseason? Yeah. Michael, Mr. I think Gill. most NHL teams... <laughs> You've gone to Mr. I call him Mr. <laughs> Mike. Okay, last word you, Strash. That's this year. Most yeah. NHL That's teams year. have pressure on them to win. The Leafs could ice a team that never wins. But their general manager's got pressure. He knows if they don't win this year, he's going to get fired. So I think they're still going to sell out. You know what? I got one thing to say. More OTR when we return. Or Mickey James. Chad Johnson did the chicken dance, Daryl Jackson did the sprinkler, and some old Jewish ladies did the YMCA at apartment spot. Uh, we'll get to most of that in a moment. But now, Ricky Williams, out for, two, out for two months. Ricky should be available this week against the Calgary Stampeders. In his absence, John Avery and Jeff Johnson both, I think, played better than Ricky Williams had played. But he did not, of course, have Damon Allen, a quarterback. It's complicated. All three players are available. If you were picking, who would you start? You're kidding me, right? Uh, <laughs> is, is that the CFL trick question or something? Why? 
If you have Ricky Williams on your roster, he plays. It's as simple as that. No, I, don't, you, I don't even know anything about Avery or anybody else. I don't watch the CFL. If Ricky Williams so is you're on your roster the assumption, and Ricky Williams healthy, is there, of course, he's going to yes, be the he best. Plays. No, I, I think he, you didn't I, bring I, him here to watch. I think he played John Avery this week. The reason I think he played John Avery, John Avery's on a roll right now. John, John Avery's had a pretty good last couple of games playing. He's on a roll. He, he's Ricky back into it. I'm not saying you don't play Ricky. I think you play both of them. But I think you start John Avery because he's, he's wasn't been... Wasn't there an issue, been, and you might disagree with this, but wasn't Ricky, I mean, he had a couple, he started to come but he's having a tough time grasping the CFL game, no, right? I, no, no, he's not having a tough time grasping well, the game. What's going this on? Guy, what's in the okay, he, he, he is a, he in the between, the he's a between the tackles type of running back. <laughs> right. Okay, in the first couple of games of the season, okay, he was used primarily on pitch plays and things right, of that sort. Right. That's what the offensive coordinator wanted to do. That offensive coordinator is not here right now. So now we have a different chain of flops in offenses, and now our running backs are doing pretty good. Now. But he hasn't been, he hasn't played since okay, but, your but, offensive, but, but, uh, uh, offensive coordinator was fired. No, he, he wasn't. But, but understand this. When Ricky came into the game, all the CFL knew he was in the game. They're going to load up the box. They're going to put eight, nine guys in the box to stop Ricky Williams. And okay? Spurgeon Wynn was a quarterback, Spurgeon. and Spurgeon Wynn, no knock on him. Well, it is it a knock on him. It has nothing to do with Spurgeon. Oh, but the defense, every, oh, no, it does not. Oh, the defense was tailoring their defense around, stopping Ricky, because they right. wanted to prove hold the on, point. Hold on, hold on. I've got to address this. Are you telling me that if Damon Allen's a quarterback, they're going to try to stop the run exactly the same way, or are they going to respect the pass more when Damon's in I'm there? trying to say, if you're running the ball, and you have eight or nine guys in the box, I don't care who your quarterback is, if you hand the ball off, you're going to get popped by eight or nine guys that's in the box. They well, they don't put eight or nine guys in, in the box against Damon Allen because you're not going to hand the ball sure to Ricky do. Williams. Sure, he's sure. going to exploit. That early, they did do that early on in the year. They did that do that. team that's on a winning roll right now, they've righted their ship, uh, so to speak. I, I go with Jeff Johnson. You've got a Canadian guy. Oh, you don't, you're not taking up an import spot. We know what we're going to get with Ricky Williams. He's probably going to be, he's a better NFL running, but he's more suited to the NFL, four yards in between the tackles. We've seen what we get with John Avery. We've got a team on a roll. Let's not waste an import spot. I like Jeff Johnson. What's the I know chemistry Adrian with Ricky too. Williams I, on that team? What's that the again? chemistry? What is the chemistry like with Ricky versus John Avery? Who Ricky, are the players like? They, 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 like they like everybody. We have, we, have a, we have a team that doesn't have any emotional disgrace with anybody. Ricky Everybody's fine. Is. But you made a good point. Jeff Johnson is a great back. Jeff Johnson is a guy who can, who can carry the load. He showed that last year, and he's shown that this year. He can catch the ball at the backfield, and he can run the ball. Which, Ricky, which Ricky can't do? Ricky can't catch the ball. Ricky's, not, you know, Ricky's not known as a pass catcher. Like, like, like I said earlier, we had a different offensive philosophy earlier on in the year when we had Ricky in there than we do now with Jeff Johnson there. In the, in the game. So if, if, if Ricky Williams is under this new but philosophy, you sign Ricky that, to, to <laughs> well, when, Ricky gets into the end zone, when <laughs> Ricky gets into the end zone, we'll all be wondering what's he going to do. Probably not much. He's not an end zone dance guy. The Stamps toned down their end zone dance celebration. Friday night, they were in the end zone all night against the Winnipeg Blue Bombers, but they didn't do any of this kind of stuff. It was a big issue last week. Higgins said he wouldn't tell them to curtail it. The league last week didn't say anything. Um, do you like that stuff? And are you kind of disappointed that Calgary's got You know what, back? the bottom line is that they're funny. The NFL has wrestled with these issues for years. You know, they, that's why they call them the No Fun League. And this year we see all these different rules. The bottom line is sports is entertainment. And if the fans like it, and if no players are being from the other team are being directly, you know, taunted or mocked, then I'm all for right. it. And if the other teams don't like that, they can answer on the field. That's the yeah, thing. Yeah. Don't let Every score one of those is aimed I, I, at the other team. You're right. They can answer it on the field. Yeah, I, I think you can go. I, I don't have a problem with celebrations. I celebrated it one or two times when, when I scored and <laughs> I played. But I, I think I think what they're doing is fine. But I think they went a little bit overboard with, with the thing on the on the track where they did the really right. that, that was a little bit overboard. But, 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 anything that's fine. Everything you're watching. You're watching but, 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 it's it's fun. Fun. The it's not directed. It's not directed towards anybody. How long did they practice that? Yeah, that's unbelievable. I think they're I think they're quite creative, and I think they're I think they're funny and everyone here is laughing. I know the commentators on TV were laughing when they, uh, when they did them. And I, I know when the NFL started to try to regulate these things, the fans didn't like it, the commentators didn't like it, and the bottom line was Guys, the players didn't like it. Terrific job. Thanks to everybody for doing Off the Record. Thanks for coming into Buffalo for me. Thanks I appreciate for it. Uh, Adrian Smith, Toronto Argonauts have Calgary this weekend, and then your next home game is? September 30th at Skydome. Uh, come down and check us out. We are in first place right now after a terrible start. But hey, come down and watch your first place. Argonauts. And it's a ladies' night, right? It is ladies' night. Trish Stratus, speaking of ladies, returns for next question. Here's an email before we go to break for you, Adrian Smith. And it relates to our last topic. Of all the guys you covered in your career, who was the worst defender when it came to celebrating a touchdown? Don Narcisse. <laughs> I remember Saskatchewan Rough Rider. Don More Narcisse. OTR in a moment. <laughs> The 2006 Degree Poker Championship. Playoff 3 at 8 and Playoff 4 at 9. Thursday. Ooh, see that girl? <laughs> I'll give you 6.0 for that. That was awesome. I kind of got over it pretty fast. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> Next question. Just bring it, Lance. Look at the crowd. 
Oh, I won't cut the crap because look who's here. <laughs> the retired Trish Stratus. You ready for next question? Ready. You know how it works, right? I'm ready. You were studying biology at York University. You wanted medicine. Are you smarter than Vince McMahon? Yes, sir. <laughs> and that's the way you respond to him. <laughs> uh, you're Greek. Your fiancé is Italian. How many people will be attending your wedding? Oh. And how many of those will you know? <laughs> uh, they'll be about close to 350. I'll know probably about 100. Who on the uh, WWE roster is coming to your wedding? Next question. Uh, who in the current roster definitely won't be getting an invitation? Give me one name of someone. You're definitely not inviting them. Uh, Gene Snitsky. Who was always hitting on you in the locker room? No one. Really? Really. I'm just mm. not their type, I guess. Best part about being on the road? Best part? Probably uh, getting to see the world. Worst part about being on the road? Getting to see the world, but not actually getting to see the world. That's a great answer. <laughs> Who's a better kisser, Mickey James or Pamela Anderson? Hmm, that's a tough one. Pamela Anderson all the way. Which male wrestler spent the most time in front of a mirror? Randy Orton. You work with China. Who was more masculine, China or your fiance? China, 100 <laughs> percent. No offense to my fiance. <laughs> uh, there have been countless storylines of guys bursting into your dressing room backstage. Did any of those boys ever see more than you wanted them to see? Um, <clears throat> yeah, yeah, it happens. But you know what? It's like part of the boys. Sure it is. <laughs> All of those outfits. Have, did you ever have a Janet Jackson type of wardrobe malfunction? Last night, on my very last match, a whole lot of crack. And uh, if you notice, there's a few times where, um, yeah, my, my buddies had to be readjusted. <laughs> but, I gave, I gave like him a, a lot man. more I've than I, in his that. whole seven years. That's the most they got out of me. <laughs> well, well, let me ask you this. In concert with that, is televised wrestling no longer for children? Certain segments. How long does it take for you to put your makeup on prior to a match? Mm, about 40 minutes. What's the funniest thing a fan has ever yelled at you while you were performing? You're fat. <laughs> and what's the creepiest thing you've ever heard? <laughs> uh, take off your shoes, let's see your toes. <laughs> Does the WWE lot. need The Rock back? Um, they don't need him back. Can you wrap it up with a Vince McMahon impersonation for me? Sure. Michael Landsberg, you're fired. <laughs> Vince does a better Vince than you, but you clearly do a better you than Vince. Congratulations, best of luck in your new life, and the fact is you can now come back and be a regular once again on Off the Record. Do we have I your promise? It. You got it. See you soon. Thank you. Off the Record with Michael Landsberg is brought to you by the Keg Steakhouse and Bar. For great steaks, good friends, see you tonight. Michael Landsberg's clothing, supplied by Got Style, Toronto's newest menswear store and spa.